Good day, folks. Benjamin Yurkovich here with Washington Weather Chasers, and we have active weather heading towards Washington State this week. And there seems to be an increase in confidence in the ensemble data for some sort of windstorm off the coast later this week. Jumping into it here, looking at satellite imagery, we can see right here this mid-latitude cyclone up there in the Gulf of Alaska, and this is the start of our jet extension that is going to be affecting the weather in Washington state this week. You can also see all these clouds back further west. And looking at the next couple days here, today is going to be mostly dry. Then we're going to get clipped by the tail end of a cold front on Wednesday, and then it's going to dry out again for a good chunk of Thursday. Jumping ahead to the European model here, looking at Thursday, it's mostly dry, and then we have the approach of the atmospheric river on Thursday evening through Friday morning, and that's gonna pack a punch, especially on the coast where it's gonna end up being pretty windy, and then we're gonna get some post-frontal showers, but look at what's lingering behind it. We got ourselves a mid-latitude cyclone developing on the deterministic run of the European model now, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Looking at the rainfall totals for the atmospheric river, it's not looking totally extreme, but out there in the Olympic Peninsula, the European model is calling for there being up to five inches of rain on the western slopes of the Olympics, which is not totally uncommon out there. And anywhere from two inches or so out there on the coast and less inland, but Still a good soaking for Washington State. It could cause some rises on the rivers. GFS is showing something similar, maybe a little bit less rain for the Olympic Mountains. And now looking at the winds for that front on Thursday into Friday, you can see that it is going to be pretty breezy. This is the sustained winds, sustained at around 28 knots out there on the San Juan Islands and around 30 knots out there on the coast. But as it gets close, this most recent European model run has it getting close to sustained at 40 miles per hour down there by the Long Beach Peninsula. So Friday morning could be pretty blustery out there on the coast. And looking at wind gusts as this front is approaching the area, San Juan Islands will be gusting probably into the 40 mile per hour range plus. And then as this front approaches the coast on Friday, Check out some of these gusts just offshore. 62, this most recent European model run, brings a pretty reasonable blow down there to the Long Beach Peninsula. Been keeping an eye on this, and that could be a pretty dynamic cold frontal passage down there if that were to occur. And now what I'm most interested in is this storm development that we've been keeping an eye on for several days. The deterministic models kind of backed away from the idea for a couple days, and then they're starting to bring it back. Although not quite as deep and strong as we were seeing a few days ago. But regardless, the signal that the models were sniffing out a couple days ago seems like it was a good one. And this could still pack quite the punch depending on exactly where this goes. And also the depth is still in question, but it's looking like on Friday evening through Saturday, there could be a mid-latitude cyclone still that's going to develop somewhere off the Washington coast. And the European model brings it up across Vancouver Island with a pretty decent pressure rise down there on the coast and also in the interior here. And if we were to pop over and look at the wind gusts here for that, that would be a decent windstorm for Washington State. Not major, but it would be the first uh, kind of regional blow uh, of the season. Now the details of all this are still needing to be worked out. We don't know exactly what the wind speeds are going to be like on Friday into Saturday, but it is interesting seeing the deterministic models beginning to pick up it on more. And as I mentioned, the European ensemble is beginning to look a little bit more confident in there being some sort of mid-latitude cyclone just off the Washington coast. Each one of these numbers right here represents a low center, and there is a bullseye just off to the west of Washington State now. Whereas the last couple days, it's been a bit more spread out, still showing there being some ensemble member lows. But this is what we were looking at last weekend where we had a mean bullseye of these deep monster mid-latitude cyclones. And then that kind of went away. And as I already mentioned, we had the hints of there still being something, but now we're starting to get more of a signal again as we get closer. Uh, of there being a mid-latitude cyclone somewhere near the region. 
Looking at the GFS, it's also showing something similar, except for it brings it a little bit further south into the southern Washington coast. And that would be a decent windstorm for whoever is just south of that low center and also behind it. And the GFS ensemble data is also beginning to show more of a bullseye just off the coast of the development of a mid-latitude cyclone sometime on Saturday morning. And right now, it seems like the area that we're watching for this low to go is anywhere from probably North Vancouver Island to Northwest Oregon. That's kind of our landfall zone that we're gonna be keeping an eye on for this thing. All right, folks, if you're enjoying these videos, please make sure and like and subscribe. And if you like this video, you'll probably like that one. Talk to you later.